Hi, welcome to my session about learning hierarchical acquisition functions for Bayesian optimization. So I'm Niels Rotman, um, these are my colleagues, and I like to start with a short motivation on why we are doing this. So um, just imagine you have some robot, for example, a humanoid, who wants to learn some complicated control task. For example, here, um, as we use uh, throughout the section, um, uh, postural control balancing task. So the robot should starts here in this uh, squat position and tries to stand up without falling down. And what we do with uh, learning approaches is we are applying them in general first to some simulations and then go onto a real system. But on the real system, we need in general then some fine tuning. And this fine tuning is kind of crucial. Um, why? Because in simulations, there's no problem if the um, robot falls down, it can't be get damaged. And, but if we are going now on a real system and the robot falls down, we may get the problem that we crash our robot. So what we want is to get some safe policy exploration strategies. However, to get those strategies, we in general need expert knowledge to anticipate these or to anticipate in general potential dangerous situations. But expert knowledge is expensive or not available, so we would like to avoid these um, dangerous situations in general or to reduce the number of rollouts required so that we get uh, so that we reduce at least the uh, potential dangerous situations so and this is what we want to copy from humans they are require only just a few trial like maybe two or three trials to perform reasonably well so if we tell a human he should learn the stand-up squat um, you will learn it like in two or three trials and we would like that our robot can learn this also in just a few trials and a good first approach for this kind of problems or fast learning strategies with just a few rollouts is Bayesian optimization. But it, Bayesian optimization in general only works for low dimensionalities. So with low dimensional input parameter space. And this is a problem because if we have like a complicated humanoid, we got a huge amount of parameters. Uh, for example, if we have like a seven joints, uh, if we have seven joints and we use uh, a PID controller for each joint, we have already 21 parameters. If we then have different rear points, like 10 or so, we got this 21 parameters times 10, so we got around uh, 210 parameters. And Bayesian optimization only works in general for, for 20 parameters roughly, so um, this might be a problem. So the question is, can we overcome this problem? Um, using a hierarchical approach um, to then improve the learning procedure and get to a much faster learning result with only a few designed uh, features. And how this works, I will uh, explain now in a more detailed way. The general concept here is the following. Uh, for normal Bayesian optimization, so standard BO, we have a mapping which is here shown from our policy parameters to our rewards. And this mapping may lead to these not nicely shaped um, area or not nicely shaped function. Here are a lot of local minima and so an optimum, so to find an optimum is really um, complicated here. And our approach is now to define some features and this paper we used therefore expert features, so features which are created by experts. And we first train then our model or find optimal features for our model, which hopefully generates then a much nicer space and then condition the parameter of our policy based on these features to then map in the end back to the rewards. And this will lead or hopefully lead to a much faster um, optimization procedure. 
So mathematically, we can write this as, as the following. So we have here the return j based on the policy parameters theta. And the return is based on the sum of all the rewards over all time steps. And the rewards are defined by the um, state of the system x and the input of the system u. And they are conditioned on the policy which we apply. And the policy is based on parameters, on the policy parameters. And these policy parameters are conditioned on our features. And this is our return. And this return we want to maximize. And if we maximize this return with regard to our parameters theta and our feature c, we got then our optimal parameter theta for our policy and our optimal features. And this approach we built into the Bayesian optimization. So what I now shortly will go over is the Bayesian optimization procedure in general. So for Bayesian optimization, we will use Gaussian processes as modeling function and we use the Martin kernel for the Gaussian processes. Uh, and from the Gaussian processes, we get here a kind of a mean function. So we got here first some uh, random measurement points or function evaluations. And based on this, from the Gaussian processes generated mean function and on the uncertainty value, which is here in the gray area, we can estimate an acquisition function, which is here marked green. And we evaluate then our next point so we define the next position where we want to evaluate our function uh, by the highest value of our, acquisition, of our acquisition function, which will be here. So that would be the next point where we evaluate our function. And this is the general Bayesian optimization procedure. And with the new evaluation point, we then proceed and go for the next iteration until we are satisfied with the result. So again, we have, um, we have the um, general Bayesian optimization procedure, which is marked here on the outer line. Uh, we have some controller, which is based on some parameters, which generates then the policy. And it gener generates the input u into the system. The system defines then the system state based on the input u. And the system state goes to the return function, which generates also the return, the return goes into the PO process and optimize the parameters and everything goes again until or iterates through until we are satisfied with the results. And our approach is now that we also generate some features C based on the states of the system X. And then we first maximize our uh, feature C given our data set D. And Afterwards, use the maximized parameters, uh, maximized features here to then condition our second Bayesian optimization algorithm onto these features and then find optimal parameters that are. And these optimal parameters that are then going back into the controller and we iterate over this. So that's in general the whole idea of our approach. And here on the right upper corner, you can see the algorithm uh, as a soil code um, shortly noticed. We evaluated our hierarchical Bayesian optimization approach onto a humanoid postural balancing um, task. So the humanoid uh, was in a squat and then tries to stand up without um, falling down. And we compared it to the Bayesian optimization. And as you can see here, our HIBO approach, which is uh, marked in blue, uh, learns or learns much faster than the normal Bayesian approach, Bayesian optimization approach. So our HIBO approach already generates really good results around um, 10 iterations. And the Bayesian optimization approach requires roughly 45 estimations, uh, iterations until it gets the same um, results. And also we can, uh, we can compare it uh, with the success quotes. So uh, with the Bayesian optimization approach, we got a, like a 60% success quote. And with the Hebo approach, we got kind of 78% success quote. 
And the success code means here that the times of our training episodes where the um, humanoid could stand up without falling down. So since we wanted to learn as fast and as effective as humans, we compared then our humanoid uh, learning approach versus human learning approaches. And we compared it by uh, required trials before the first success. So the human requires roughly like six trials before the first success for standing up. And the humanoid requires roughly like 10, 10, nine trials before the first success. So it's quite nearly the same and they learn quite fast. Also, we compared to the um, trajectory area, uh, which is a common measure for uh, human stand up, uh, uh, hu human balancing poses. And as you can see here, the learning behavior and um, the optimization, optimization procedure here during the episodes are quite the same. So both is increasing and both is stabilizing. stabilizing. So it's also a good cost measure basically. So let's come to the conclusion. And uh, first of all, so what we saw is that Hebo, also of the hierarchical approach, outperforms standard PO in a complex humanoid postural control task. And here on the right, you can see again the percentage of successful trials and Hebo is here much better than the general BO concept and thus um, ensures more safety and faster um, policy exploration. And what we also saw is that the laming, uh, learning behavior of Hebo is similar to that of real humans. So um, our idea was to be as fast as real humans for learning some complicated control tasks. In our case, it was a postural uh, balancing task. And as you can see here on the left, here was human trials and here the human trials. And you can see we are in a similar range. And also what we are still asking us now is um, or what we have done so far is that we got um, the task relevant features from experts. And the question which now mainly arises is, um, can we also learn these features? So um, can we avoid using expert and instead using some learning procedure to um, figure out which features are really important for our hierarchical approach? So that leads to our future work. So the first study we want to um, do is to identify the importance of the individual features and the experience replay so that we then really can say uh, which features are important for this kind of task and how, are, how big is the influence of the experience replay uh, which we add into our hierarchical approach. Um, second thing is that we, as I already mentioned, want to try to learn online or offline the features which are required for our um, hierarchical approach. And this we can do, for example, with autoencoder networks. And the third thing is that we would like um, to evaluate the benefit um, of these features with respect to either simulated or real experiments. So um, the question arises if there is a big difference between um, the same features if we are simulating some experiment or doing it in a real experiment. Uh, why is that so? Because if there is no real um, difference between both situations by the choice of the features, then we can um, generate these features and simulate or learn these features in simulated experiments, experiments and apply them onto real experiments that would also enhance our performance. Um, if you like, if you are interested to get more in touch with me or um, discuss this topic, feel free to visit my homepage, uh, which you can see here on the left. So I thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed my talk.